You know, you might be throwing away one of the best cooking secrets hiding right in your own kitchen. Instead of tossing that beef fat, I'm going to show you how to make beef tallow in a slow cooker and get more bang for your buck. It's super simple and turns what you usually waste into a rich flavorful ingredient that can seriously level up your cooking. Just imagine having a versatile fat on hand that not only boosts the flavor of your meals, but also has been a kitchen staple for generations. Before we get started, let's answer just a few questions. Like, what is beef tallow? Well, it's beef fat that has been rendered, and it's amazing for cooking because it has a high smoke point and adds great flavor. Back in the day, people used it all the time before vegetable oils became popular. But here's the cool part. Tallow is making a comeback. And learning how to make beef tallow in a slow cooker is a super easy way to jump on board. Plus, you get to control the quality and flavor of what you're cooking. What are the health benefits of tallow? Tallow is not just a cool cooking fat, but it's also good for you. When you make beef fat into tallow, you get a lot of important vitamins, like vitamin A, D, E, and K, which help your eyes, your bones, and your body. It also has something called CLA, which can help you lose body fat. Yep, you heard me right, you can eat fat to burn fat, but that's not all. Tallow is super useful. You can cook with it and even use it on your skin. It works great for keeping your skin soft and helps with those dry spots. So no matter if you're cooking tasty food or using it like a lotion, tallow is awesome. How do you store beef tallow? One of the best things about tallow is it lasts a long time. You can keep it in a cool, dark place and it won't go bad quickly. If you want to keep it even longer, you can put it in a fridge or a freezer. Now, let's get ready to make some tallow. Here's what you're going to need to have on hand. Grab a slow cooker, a cutting board, a sharp knife, and some jars to store your tallow when it's all done. And that's it. Easy peasy, right? Now, let's talk about the fat. I got about a pound of beef fat here, which I got from trimming up some picanhas and ribeyes. But don't worry if you don't have that. You can use fat from other cuts of meat, like steaks, roasts, and briskets. Just make sure that you have some nice, good quality fat to work with. Next, cut the fat into manageable pieces, about one inch each. This helps melt it down evenly in the slow cooker. It doesn't have to be perfect, just roughly the same size so it all cooks at the same rate. Now that we've got all the fat prepped, it's time to get cooking. For rendering tallow, you want to keep things low and slow. Set your slow cooker to a low heat setting and let it work its magic for several hours. I like doing it this way as it's the lazy man way of doing things. You don't have to do much babysitting. We're talking about a nice relaxing cooking session here. You just let it do its thing. Your only responsibility is to check in on it every now and then, and give it a gentle stir, and in no time, you'll start to hear that fun little crackle sound as the fat begins to render. And that's a good sign. It means that the tasty fat is melting down nicely. The cooking time is going to vary depending on the amount that you have. Obviously, one pound of fat is going to render a lot faster than 10 pounds of fat. And a tip here is, once you get towards the end of the cooking time, you might want to remove the lid. This helps some of that steam escape and allows any leftover water to evaporate. Keeping it in cover for too long can make the tallow cloudy and we want it nice and clear. Just keep an eye on it and you'll know it's ready when you see that the fat has shrunk down and it may even turn dark brown and you have a beautiful golden lid liquid forming. Oh, and trust me, your kitchen is gonna smell amazing during the process. For that one pound of fat, it has been right around six hours of total cook time. And it's time to strain out all the little bits and pieces. For this step, you're gonna need some simple tools. Grab a mess strainer and some paper towels. If you have some cheesecloth or a cloth napkin or maybe a metal sieve, those work great too. And here's how it works. Pour the hot towel through your strainer into a clean bowl. This will catch all the leftover crispy bits, you know, the cracklings. The goal is to get a nice smooth tallow with no solid chunks. Once you strain everything, let the tallow cool down just a little bit before transferring into jars. This is important because you don't want to deal with hot oil splashing around. And cleanliness matters here. Make sure your jars are clean and dry before you pour the tallow in. All right, now that you've learned how to make beef tallow in a slow cooker, let's talk about all the awesome ways you can use it in the kitchen. First off, tallow is perfect for frying and sauteing as a high smoke point, so it won't burn like butter or vegetable oil. Personally, I love using tallow to make the crispiest french fries, searing steaks, and frying up some eggs. It's also great for browning meat, sauteing vegetables, and adding a rich, beefy flavor that really kicks your dishes up a notch. Speaking of flavor, tallow has this deep, savory taste that you just don't get from other fats. It brings an extra layer of deliciousness to whatever you're cooking. 
If you're making sauces, gravies, or even roasting vegetables, kale can add that unique flavor boost that make all the difference. And here's a fun fact. Kale isn't just for cooking. You can get creative and use it in skincare too. Some people make homemade soaps or moisturizers with tallow because of its nourishing properties. So whether you're whipping up your dinner or experimenting with DIY products, tallow is a seriously versatile ingredient. And now that you've got your beef tallow ready, here's a little secret. You're going to want to try to use it in your next rib recipe. Trust me, when you cook ribs with this stuff, the results are insane. The tallow adds a rich flavor and makes the meat so tender it's almost too good to believe. And if you're wondering how to make ribs in the oven that literally fall off the bone, you've got to check out this video here. I'll see you there.